Hey everybody, it's Paul Ramsey and I am joined today by Dr. Sherry Bernier who is presenting at the 2017 NGH convention and she is going to be talking about achieving empowerment, increasing self-esteem and self-worth. How are you, Sherry? I'm doing great, thanks. Thanks for being here with me. Uh, we've never met before, we've never no. had a chance to, to get to know each other before, so just tell me, how did you get into hypnotism? Well. When I was back in 1998, I was a grad student. It was a year after I was diagnosed with breast cancer. And my professor, I was studying um, counseling, getting a master's in counseling, was going to be training five nurses and he wanted to train five um, counseling students. So I jumped on the idea and I haven't looked back since. Um, it's been wonderful. Um, if I had had these tools when I was going through chemotherapy and surgery, um, it would have been so much so helpful to me. So I have a program that I usually do at the Guild about the breast cancer voyage. And also another passion of mine is self-esteem, increasing people's self-esteem through empowering themselves. That's great. So you have a, already a, a diversity of experiences and that's what the convention's all about, right? We bring together all these people. So of, you know, all the different sessions going on. Tell me more about why, I mean, you could have chose to present on a lot of things. Why is this topic important to you? Um, I'm also a professor. I'm a full-time professor at Goodwin College in East Hartford. And I teach a course in personal growth and development. And I work with a lot of clients that have depression, anxiety, and it comes down to having low self-esteem. So if we can empower people to have a better look at themselves um, on how they see themselves, then that's one of the first steps. And what I do is I give them, in my research, I found um, a wonderful woman named Dr. Marilyn Sorensen, where she has a 50, it's like a questionnaire, and it's, um, you just check off each thing that you um, feel that you have of low self-esteem, and then you tally the scores at the end. And you can use this. She, she allows anyone to use it as long as they don't change any of the questions and use it exactly as she um, developed it. So I use that both in my classroom and with my clients. And you'd be surprised as to how people didn't realize that they had low self-esteem. Or if they have low self-esteem, how, you know, how can they improve? And that's the whole part of the empowerment. And what I'll be doing at NGH is I'll be teaching other hypnotists all the research that I've studied and some techniques that I came about with um, hypnosis. That's cool. That's mm -hmm. great. Hey, have you ever read, um, oh, I love this, have you ever read Grit by Angela Duckworth? No, no. Yeah, you might be interested mm -hmm. in that book. That's a, I mean, it's, it's not the same as self-esteem, but there's definitely a connection. Angela Duckworth has um, sort of devoted her career to looking at like, why are some people more resilient than others? And her catchword that she's come back to is this concept of grit and how do some people seem to be grittier than others? And sort of similar to what you described, she's worked out a evaluation tool that wow. gives you a grit score. And yeah. um, totally she's found that, you know, um, you know, it's not just, are you the smartest or are you those, it's a lot of times, you know, what her research would suggest is that it comes down to um, the people who have the highest grit scores are the ones who persevere and they stick with it. Even when people with more money or more talent or more whatever have given up, they keep going. It's a fascinating, this whole area to me of how do we develop a sense of self-efficacy? Right. How do we develop our self-esteem? How do we uh, come to, because what we always talk about with clients, right, is limiting beliefs. Exactly, right? negative talk, ne negative self-talk. Yeah. Get rid of the negative self-talk, which is a big part of, the low self-esteem. Yeah. And I've cool. done presentations in um, North Carolina, all over the place, um, my topic. That's great. And um, one thing I wanted to mention was that it's really important for the person to not feel bad once they do take um, the Sorensen low self-esteem test. 
Right. I had some students come up to me last week saying, oh, I better go see someone because my scores are so low. Right. I had no idea my self-esteem was so bad. And then they panic, right? Exactly. exactly. <laughs> no, no, no. It's just a self-awareness. That's yeah. the whole point. Good and point. Her book is called Breaking the Chains of Low Self-Esteem. You know, and um, it's just really an important tool to have as a hypnotist. Tell me more about that. Tell me more about why it's like, if people come and they spend this time with you at convention, where's the value for them investing this time for themselves and for the work they do with clients? It's really important that they, um, they, know, they have the tools. I studied, I did research, um, you know, different techniques that I could use. Um, and that's what they'll be learning. They'll be learning different techniques um, visualization techniques. Self-hypnosis is a big one to teach the client self-hypnosis. And that's the first step. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Because that's what we want. We want to have healthy models for how we help clients get their results. Mm -hmm. And, and self-hypnosis is such an important part of that. I'm so glad you brought that up. That's awesome. And also journaling. Yeah, I have tell me more than that. I I'm going to read this yeah. in your description. It says, um, you will take away the knowledge to teach your clients self-hypnosis and journaling in reaching empowerment. Tell me more about that. Well, it's really important to journal, to write down your feelings, okay? Um, if they write down their feelings, they can take a look at it and say, do I really feel that way or, or what's stopping me from moving forward, okay? And also, a big thing about journaling, I have a journal that I have my clients do called the Daily Journal of Joy. They have to write down one thing a day that brings them joy, okay? And that's really important because I work with a lot of women. It seems that for some reason that a large amount of my clients are women who are middle-aged women who are finding that they're depressed. They don't have any idea why they're depressed. It's because they, I believe, it's Dr. Bernier saying, I believe that they've lost their... Um, their passion, they've lost their joy in their life. And, and I always say that when I work with, with clients with um, depression, I don't try to make them reach the happiness goal, you know, with the happiness. Um, if you can find joy and contentment in your life, isn't that a good place to be? And that's what I tell them. So by journaling in their book, they have to tell me at least one thing in their life that day that brought them joy, whether it be looking at a, um, a, a, a new flower, you know, or the trees in the, in the, in the fall when they turn, or any, anything that, they, that brings them joy, a song. Um, I know when I was doing my um, internship at a, a hospital on a psych ward, I was using these techniques, and I asked uh, one of my, um, I was doing self-hypnosis with them, and I asked them, why, um, tell me a time in your life when you felt joy, and one woman said, I never felt joy. And I said, you never felt joy, and of course I got to read their, their charts before, um, before I had a session, the group session with them. And I said, what do you mean you have, a, you have no joy in your life? You never felt joy. I said, don't you have three children? She said, yeah, why? And she was like really getting a little angry with me. And I said, didn't you feel joy when you gave birth to those babies and held them for the first time? And her answer was, yes, I forgot. So if you journal every day something that brings you joy, it's right there in front of them. Yes. Yes. And then they can bring it back to me for the next session. We can go over it. It's like climbing a mountain almost, you know, a mountain of joy. How can you reach yeah. that top, you know? Listen, I'm totally on your side because before I was in hypnotism, I was an English teacher. And so I was always telling my students, writing is thinking, right? Mm -hmm. And so that process of, of journaling is so essential to keeping your thinking process you know, alive and fresh. So I'm behind you 100% with that. I think that's fantastic. And I also have something that I use in my practice and with my students is, um, it's called, it's all about me, meaning it's all about the person. And they have to list some things where it's list your favorite food, your favorite color, something that you're especially proud of, something that brings or has brought you joy something that I am grateful for, my best feature, and those who know me would describe me as. And do you know that my clients have a hard time, especially if they're depressed, they're so self-absorbed right. in depression that they don't see outside of that. 
Yeah. Yet when they take the time to have to write these things down, they're like, wow, that was harder than it looks. Right. Yeah. You know? So it brings so things that, back to awareness, right? right. Stuff that it's sort right. of gotten out of their what, world. What are you proud of, you know? Yeah. Um, what's your favorite food? Yeah, that's cool. That's and cool. Then, and then I also have them do something called, and this is what I, I'm bringing to the convention, because it's, hypnosis is the, 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 the techniques. These are tools to get to that technique. Yep. Okay. I also have them do something called achieving joy. And it's, I ask them to list three things that would bring you joy. Write them down in your journal. And are they realistic? If you want to, one of your, um, something that would bring you joy is to go to Italy. If you don't have the funds to go to Italy, is it realistic? Right, right. So what is the alternative? Think, what would, you, what would be an alternative? I have one. The alternative would be go to a fine Italian restaurant, get a bottle of wine, watch the travel station, get a, you know, get a DVD on, on Italy. Yeah. It doesn't necessarily mean you're not going to ever get there, but you could have joy with those surroundings. Sure, sure. So you have, you, when people come and they do, they're going to be doing these exercises in yes. your seminar in August. In my seminar, yes. Okay. Yes. All right. So you guys, you've got, she's, she's mm -hmm. taking you through this process. You're going to be going through this process, modeling the same kinds of exercises you could do with your clients mm -hmm. and you'll get the benefit of working through them yourself. So you're going to be some, some hands-on stuff here. And again, this is Sunday, August 13th from noon to 1250. Mm -hmm. So, all right, Sherry, if people want to learn more about you, they want to learn more about you and what you do, what's a good way for them to do that? You can go to my website at bernierhypnosis.vpweb.com. There you go. Thank you so much for making time for me. I appreciate it. Thank you so much, Paul. Have a wonderful day. All right. Take care. We'll see you in August. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye.